Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In a previous episode, we replaced the high voltage doorknob capacitor in this homemade miniature TEA nitrogen laser with a wire ended high voltage capacitor. Uh, we had reasonable results out of this. We had a, a bit of a flashover problem, uh, but following on from some of the comments down below, we've got a way to chemically strip uh, the original epoxy off of this thing uh, and do something a little bit more sensible with it. So let's go. So this is a high voltage wire ended capacitor, about 1000 picofarads at uh, 50,000 volts. Um, obviously this won't stand off 50,000 volts because it will flash over between the leads as we saw in a previous video uh, where I substituted one of these for a doorknob capacitor. Here's an example of uh, a, a proper doorknob capacitor. Um, I did a little bit of hacking and put together this uh, awful little contraption uh, which worked pretty well. Like I say, I mean, it flashed over between the leads but it, it was at least for proof of concept it was fine. But obviously we can do much better than this. Somebody suggested in the comments that it was possible to uh, extract the, the actual dielectric itself out of these by soaking them in acetone and formic acid. Um, I did order formic acid but honestly I found that straight acetone did the job just fine so let's have a look at that. So here's my little science experiment. It's a little jar of acetone with some high voltage capacitors submerged in it. These have been in here for about a week. So we'll take one out. Should just be able to lift them out by the leads. How well this will show up on camera. Um, this is quite swelled, uh, or the epoxy is swelled anyway. And we should just be able to get in there with our thumbnail and start picking this stuff off. There's quite a bit of acetone dripping all over the place. Uh, very, very quickly and easily. It's just a, it's just a waiting game for this. Uh, like I say, sink them in acetone, leave them for a week, and the stuff just peels right off. So now we've got a bare naked uh, dielectric that we can do something with. Uh, so, so far so good. This is the least destructive way of doing this. I've tried all sorts of other things like acids and uh, heat and you tend to crack the, the dielectric which, uh, you know, isn't, isn't the best idea. We end up with an unusable capacitor. Uh, there were some previous remains of some previous efforts here where I've managed to get the dielectric out but um, managed to break the thing using heat. Uh, once we've done this, uh, a couple of things about this stuff. Um, I've soldered on uh, two brass screws to this. What I've done is I've just bent the leads over right where they meet the uh, silver plating, uh, bent them over and soldered on some brass machine screws so that we can, uh, you know, so we've got some uh, mechanical point to bolt it to things with. Uh, the reason I've done this and not soldered to the silver is, as I found out, um, if you try and solder to the silver, the silver, the solder actually dissolves the silver and it strips it right back to the uh, dielectric. Um, it's not possible, well it is possible, you can, you can glue metal plates on if you wanted to, but you're actually by doing that introducing an additional tiny capacitance between your plate and the dielectric itself, it does actually need to be silver coated, uh, there's no getting away from that. Um, so obviously once I'd done this, the next job is to sink this into epoxy. So I have one here uh, that I've made earlier there, I've just basically sunk it in piece of, uh, inside a piece of plastic pipe. And put some bolts on the end there. So we've essentially got ourselves a very inexpensive uh, doorknob capacitor substitute. Let's put this in the miniature nitrogen laser and see if it performs well enough to be, you know, considered to be a success. I've not spent a lot of time uh, on this. This is just an experiment. I haven't spent any time degassing the bubbles out of the epoxy. So I suppose um, it's a possible failure point. Uh, it could well be that the high voltage stress through the epoxy could cause those bubbles to uh, have corona inside them which will eventually damage the epoxy. If anybody's curious about the epoxy I actually used to sink this stuff in, I didn't bother with any you know, specifically formulated high voltage compound. I just used uh, off the shelf uh, Gorilla epoxy. Uh, this stuff here, so this is a five minute setting two part epoxy which is part of the reason I didn't get the bubbles out. There just wasn't enough time to fire this in a vacuum chamber before it set. Um, but it's, you know, really good strong stuff. Um, never had any issues with it, so yeah, that's the stuff. Uh, it's turned out quite well. I mean, it's fairly neat. And, you know, apart from the air bubbles that are in there, it's a pretty reasonable job. So I've just taken the original doorknob capacitor out of my homemade miniature nitrogen laser and replaced it with our homemade doorknob capacitor. 
It's quite a bit smaller than the original, but I'm confident it'll stand off, you know, 20, 25,000 volts without too much uh, in the way of issues. Uh, if you've not seen this nitrogen laser before, you want to check out some of my other videos. This is a, a miniature TEA nitrogen laser with just a six centimeter long channel. It's capable of pumping uh, homemade dye lasers. Anyway, uh, now we've got all this set up, let's connect it up to the nitrogen and the power supply and take a look and see how well this works. So this is the miniature nitrogen laser all set back up again. I've got my homemade doorknob capacitor at the back there. I've got the dye laser in front of it. Let's fire it up. As you can see, the output's pretty stable. It tails off a little bit because we're not feeding quite enough gas in for the repetition rate. So I've just repositioned the camera here just so we can get a shot of our uh, capacitor at the back there. We'll see if this thing flashes over. So we're at maybe 15, 16,000 volts there, so we'll turn up the gas pressure a little bit. At about two and a half bars. So we'd be about somewhere between 17 and 20,000 volts. I'll have to turn up the So this is really impressive. I mean, the capacitor's performing absolutely fantastic. Um, for, for a homemade doorknob, it's not bad. Let's keep going. At some point, we'll blow the hose off the barb if I turn the pressure up too high. So we can get pretty decent repetition out of the thing as well. I mean, I don't know how long this is going to last before it fails. It might last for 50 years. Who knows? Absolutely fantastic. Excellent. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.